My name is Ramsony. Welcome back to Slice and Dice. We are continuing our Blurst run from the last episode. Uh, note, this means only that we are going to be dealing with the modifier's eye singularity, a permanent item that improves the two right sides, this modifier being a benefit. Uh, vitamin E, all heroes get plus one max HP for each E in their name, not really particularly great for us. Uh, we'll also have an archer in all of the later fights from 11 to 20. We also have an item that has to be equipped to a character, giving death and plus one to the two left sides. Fear, so all big enemies have plus two max HP. And arse riders, all tier three characters have negative one to their max HP. We also get to start this run out by choosing a blessing. Cataclysm will turn three heal. I already toyed around with the idea of taking turn three heal. So it's just at the start of the third turn, heal and shield three to all allies. We very often reach the third turn, and by that time, heal and shield three is pretty transformative to what I can do. Um, hmm. I really like it. I really, really like it. It's either that or the random one. I don't want to go for Cataclysm. I'm taking the... I'm taking it. Uh, also, of course, we're not going to have all of those high-tier characters we saw previously. That was from the end of the previous one. We do feel weaker, however. All of our items disappear, only curses remain, and the blessings mind. So, I Martyr. Must be equipped. Adds death and plus one to the two left sides. So, who... Who doesn't want to play, basically? Who's fine doing the, all the worst things possible? Uh, Singularity can only really improve the fighter, and I think I'm also gonna give them the Martyr here. And the general reason behind this is because now I'm trying to use the fighter as a defensive character for these shield threes. That's going to make it really difficult for us to deal damage for a while here, which is a big problem. That's that's going to make fights tough. Oh, well. That's when the tough get going, I've heard. One damage, three damage. Any more? I mean, another four damage. Great, we're very close to taking the boar out. Sorry, another three damage, rather. One, two, three. Actually, that's it. That's the fight. Wow. Thank heck for the banner generation there being consistent. Goblin runs away. We get our first level up. Sinew or Druid. Unfortunately, if Sinew is taken here, both Marta and Singularity lose their best target on board. No one else even gets... I mean, Initiate gets one three-mana single-use side from the Singularity. Uh, there's also Druid here, who's offering just mana, growth, shield sides. I mean, honestly, I might just take the Druid just so that I can keep the fighter for a little bit longer. Also, the druid is dealing damage. They're generating mana, which deals damage. They've got a growth damage side, which deals damage. And they've got a spell, which does one damage to all enemies. Needless to say, that also deals damage. Hmm. One instance of one damage from the fighter is not really going to help anyone here. There's the three block. A lot of mana. And... I can't really take a target out this turn, right? Even with vulnerability? Well, vulnerable is still the best thing the druid can do. Sorry, the scoundrel can do. We'll see if we get the heavy strike here. We don't, unfortunately. So, I can keep people, like, comfortable. I can also burst for more damage than I would usually get on a null. That at least does put that null to, you know, one burst away from death. Uh... That's a lot of mana if I want it that way. Scoundrel can literally only get one other side that's actually useful here. Well, actually, no, the blanks are more useful because I'm using gather here. Replace blank sides with plus two mana this turn in order to generate a larger amount of the... And then we'll make the null run away. Rusty plate. Replace the middle side with blank. Plus three max HP. I mean, it's a way to offset some of the negative side of Marta. It doesn't really offset the negative side of Marta, or is it just remove temptation to use a side that otherwise has death on it? There's also the cleanse potion, heal the rightmost, or rather the rightmost side becomes heal 21 drink. Uh, I'm gonna take the random tier zero, three, uh, zero or two. <sighs> we do get a zero. 
Runic Shackle. Plus one to all mana slash mana gain sides. You cannot cast spells. I mean, legitimately, this is actually pretty good in a particular build. And that is a build in which you are attempting to generate a lot of mana so that you can use charged sides and the charged keyword a lot and don't really actually care about casting any spells. Uh, that said, that's not where we are. Alas. Mm, yeah, we definitely take damage on the buckle when it's available. Uh, initiate, that's some good mana generation. Okay, we defend the druid and then shield attack through... Easy. I didn't want to have to worry about that thorns for too long. And it looks like we won't have to worry about it for too long. In fact, if I dance here. Goodbye, Archer. Hello, Rogue or Bard? I mean, hey, Bard does include the charged keyword back into our set for us if we want it. Neither is a particularly great character to be holding the Singularity or the Marta, unfortunately. Uh, the fighter is only currently really our defensive powerhouse. They can't be that for long. The scoundrel is doing a lot of nothing right now. And I need them to do a lot more than nothing. I'm taking the rogue. Especially considering the fighter can't really afford to do damage. So we're going to be using both of these growth sides and they will both disappear as well. So we're growing the side that then won't exist. Sick dodge by the rogue there, though. I guess the fighter shouldn't really use that shield. In which case, the fighter can continue to roll in case they get damage. I'm also going to continue to roll the initiate at that rate. I was just previously being lazy. Possibility of triggering the... Other single use side? Yeah, that's completely fine. It's basically exactly the same. Okay. Now. Two damage to you. Another two damage there. Eventually, we're going to be able to generate a lot of mana out of the gather in this fight. Hmm. There's some damage out of the fighter if we need it. Ooh, okay, we don't need to use gather this turn, as it turns out. Almost unfortunate. I'm going to... Burr... Actually, I'm going to take one of those hits against the rat and use burst here. Still leaving myself with enough mana to gather next turn, so I can just generate 10 mana if I need to, and then just blow the enemy up in that way. Come on... Fighter does manage to get a blank side, eventually. We still take it, bramble out, and just have a bunch of mana left over, just in case. Quay, in order to add vitality to the left side. Uh, I guess it can increase max HP using Buckle. Other than that, not great. Leather Gloves, copy the rightmost side onto the bottom and top sides. If anyone has a good right side of their die, I can give them leather gloves as well as the singularity in order to copy that across. I like this. I just need better characters for that. Worse items, negative one item quality. That's not going to help us. Uh, tier three heroes get negative two max HP. That hurts. It does. But we're just going to have to deal with that, unfortunately. Do I really throw this on Buckle instead? I Marta? giving me the ability to get three shield on all of the sides from the fighter here, as well as actually have them roll damage if they need it. I think that might actually be better for us here. Be realistic with Buckle. Okay. It's going to completely hold here. Generate as much mana as I need for the next turn. And we can decide how to apply it now. Uh, two mana from the buckle. That's actually probably the best defense that you can get out there. And we are looking to kill this round. Speaking of. 
Okay, to there, and in fact, much easier than it needed to be there. Statue and seer. So I'll tell you what, the statue can hold the, the Mata, no problem whatsoever. Seer is another class that doesn't have really any benefit. Out of our leather gloves or singularity, I, I kind of just want to take the statue and see if I can draft into it. But I'm also very threatened right now. It's not like we're doing good. This build is held together with chewing gum and sticky tape and dreams. So, lean in, I guess. <laughs> Make the statue a martyr. Um, honestly, like if I could get these cantrips off, baby, that'd be so good. Uh, ogre and courts, yeah, we'll still need defensive factors. Thank you, Quartz, for targeting the statue, who is not going to care at all. Um, I mean, I can use Gather in order to generate mana from the statue, but I'm putting two mana into getting two mana out. You can see why that doesn't necessarily strike me as a value proposition. I'd like to see the Druid get a growth side here. Eh, screw me, I guess. We'll watch the quartz die quickly here. Leaving just the ogre to compete with us. Can I kill the ogre fast enough, actually? Rogue gets a pretty good side. Uh, honestly, it's probably only going to be two damage contributed by that. Initiate. You've still got a growth side. You've still got a cantrip side. You've still got more to push. There's the growth side, taking it, taking the mana from the druid here as well. We're probably going to use balance as a way to heal our whole party as well as deal one damage at the same time. Uh, a little bit more consistently here. Uh, I mean, like, gather, I get two mana for two mana. So I'll roll a balance and then defend the character. Oh, our heal and shield three turn. Hell yes. I forgot this was coming up. There's a lot of uh, free leeway effectively for us. Thank you much, Leo. I was looking for as much damage as possible there. And we may actually have gotten exactly it. That's it. Okay, down. Rejuvenation one versus the rain of arrows. Rejuvenation one to replace the top and bottom signs with heal 10 single use. And the Rain of Arrows replace the top side with one damage ranged and duplicate. Uh... Nope. I don't think either of those helps me. I'm going to take a random tier 2 to 4. And what I'm hoping for right now is Longbow. That is, replace your rightmost side with two damage ranged engage. To tier 4. Hey, Life Bolt. After a spell is cast, self heal 1. Nothing wrong with that. Not a thing wrong with that. Do these enemies have heavy attacks? They do not. Yeah, so they're not even necessarily going to target the statue with the most HP there. Thankfully, one of them does decide to. Okay, good defense generation by the fighter there. Two mana on the druid at this point, is that the best? No, druid continues to roll for the possibility of growing here. Nope, two mana means I'm not going to push on you again. I, I can't whiff and get a heal or a blank that doesn't do anything this round. Neat, we can actually use gather here in order to get more mana. Getting up to a total of six... There goes the bandit. We'll defend the statue a little bit. Poison's very effective against a character such as this. 
I mean, statue, you're never going to roll anything. I'm just going to lock that in. Uh, that'll be a good way to start the damage chain. Okay. I suspect they'll flee. Yeah, two versus just the statue has enough to make that target flee. If it has two health and I have 20. Berserker and Mycologist. Ooh. Berserker is really offering the ability to do the damage I've been asking for. Unfortunately, literally no one benefits from Singularity or... <sighs> or the leather gloves at that point. I'm not exceptionally effective at even healing the Berserker out of the damage they would be dealing to themselves here. Well, except for Life Bolt, which I can use. Mycologist would have the ability to hold the uh, Singularity for the plus two to a Mana Decay, as well as revive the top three defeated allies. That's a very powerful thing the Mycologist can do, but the only problem is... Uh, Is there any problem? Am I unfairly biased against the Mycologist? I think I might be. They can revive characters. That's pretty sick. Let's take the Mycologist. Adding two enemies into this fight in order to get a random tier zero item. Tier zero, I don't think I'm gonna risk it for that biscuit. Singularity on Mycologist. Yeah. I think it's a pretty good idea. I'm going to be pretty reliant on getting poison on targets from the rogue and buffing that with spore in order to get any real power on board. But that's okay. Let's give this a go. My god, some extremely sick sides to hit here very early on. I mean, statue, you have literally nothing, so that's all good. Mycologist, get us some mana. We'll use Spore to add Decay as well as plus one to the target science this turn on the Rogue. I'll use that to give two poison to the Bell. And now this is a zero damage side, so I'm not going to be able to use that poison side again. But I do get po uh, two poison. Front-loading that, far more effective. Uh, I'm going to burst to defend the fighter here as well. Noting that it's not easy for me to heal characters, so if I can defend them, probably going to be a good idea. Um, so unless I can kill the Fnatic on the top line, the Druid is going to die, definitely. Not too much I can do about that. Fighter doesn't really have the ability to chump up the defense for them. Yeah, we're probably just losing the druid here. That's okay, maybe we even uh, revive them later. Oh, I guess I could now actually kill the fanatic on the top line. And then heal the fighter? Yeah, no, I'll keep everyone alive. Fine. There you go. Even heal the fighter out of lethal's range there. Bell go gong. Oh, the big heal and defense turn. I keep forgetting that. I really wish I had the ability to... And maybe I do, and I'm just not... Disable... Skip confirm. Show clock. D -d 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 show timer. No. I kind of wish I had access to a, a a turn timer, especially considering how many of these are blessings or curses that arrive on some specific turn. Like, I know if I click here, I can get turn three, but I wish I had the ability to make that pop up. Just, just out here, just so I can look at it while I'm in the fight. Nice little bit of a visual reminder of what might be happening soon. Anyhow, Bell's already dead. I don't even need to interact with it. Spell hack or 
Natural. Natural, blue heroes only, replace the two red sides with plus two mana. That is always going to be available with the Singularity. Although hack, replace blank side with four damage this turn. That's the ability to make the statue deal four damage at will for two mana. It's actually pretty sick as well. Hmm. How many other characters would get to utilize that? Literally no one else right now, unfortunately. I'm taking Hack. I feel like I never really get the best value out of that, but I want it. At the end of every third turn, one damage to all allies. That's okay, we're defended on that turn. Or we could give uh, plus one HP for every seven base HP to a monster, which can be pretty tough. We already saw that Ogres have 12 HP rather than the base 10. Okay, spell hack. This should go on someone who will be able to keep it for a long time. Get all these illusions. Three mana would easily do the job here. Just enough to cast the... Oh my god, can you stop hitting the ones I'm going to be deleting anyway, please? Sets up for... Actually, I should probably hit the grave, to be honest here. There's the damage in AoE. And then, yeah, I'll give Statue the four damage here. Take out one of the imps that otherwise would be summoning. Now it's just an imp and a bones. Beautiful. As all things should be. There's a hack we've already set up. The two of them are teaming up to do four damage between them. Okay, one more hack, and Rogue takes out the imp easily following it. Brute and Whirl. Unfortunately, again, two characters who really aren't going to benefit from the leather gloves in much of a way at all. Um, so what am I really lacking here? I'm lacking AoE, Whirl with the ability to hit all targets at the same time, as well as one damage cleave. Outside of the Druid's balance, I'm lacking AoE. Also just raw damage to targets. So three damage heavy from the Brute, as well as two damage to self-shield. Pretty good. The ability to just straight up stun a target who otherwise might be annoying. Also pretty good. This The, the self-shielding and the stun an enemy with equal less HP than you both help to make up for the fact that we don't otherwise have an actually defensive defensive class and we don't really have a healing class that's focused on healing. I'm going to take the Brute for those reasons. Um, so, the Leather Glove. Copy the right most items at the top and bottom. Do I want to give this to anyone here? We could give the rogue the ability to dodge more often. Eh, no, not really. Not as the kids say, the vibe. I could give the mycologist like a certainty of reviving people, but I don't want to even let them die in the first place if possible here. Just that idealistic. Okay. Well, let's have a look at what we can do with this turn, because I think we've got a lot on our side. Three damage, and then Cruel is the kill there. A hack on the statue allows us to stun the Wiz, and then the Druid can kill... with the help of the Decay. Nice. The Druid can kill one of the uh, snipers that's otherwise targeting them. Brilliant opening turn right there, I think. Not have been better. And in fact, that'll help us land the killing blows. Goodbye, Wiz and Archer. Hello to Dragonhide Gloves. Okay. Is this one more useful for us, actually? Not really. I mean, not right now. It will be in the future. And Shining Bow at range to all damage sides. Um. 
Having range to add to all damage science for the sake of a rogue who's currently rolling cantrips, who wants to hit the back line with poison a lot of the time, and who I might want to upgrade into dancer or juggler? Juggler? No, juggler's also a level two character. And there's, who's the late tier orange character who does cantrip? Well, I mean, roulette's one of them. Dancer is the other. Is it just Dancer and Roulette? Yeah, it's just Dancer and Roulette. Regardless, having range on them is both very good, so they don't die to their own cantrips. Uh, I'm kind of stuck over the fact that Dragonhide can be really, really, really powerful, but we have nothing that modifies the mid aside, uh, middle side for any character at this point. I'm taking the Shining Bow. It's also worth noting we don't have any range right now, so, you know, maybe there's some value just in this giving us that. Archer, Spiker, Bones, and Ghost. Hmm. Druids offering us mana. It would really, really prefer the ability to hack one of these enemies, I think. Brute self-shield this turn seems very appropriate for you. Rogue, you can take out the back line right now, but I do want you to continue rolling if possible. Mm, you do not need to dodge, though, Rogue. That's not really your position. Okay, we get to take out the archer in the back line because we got one of the cantrips to land. Uh, the mycologist gives us enough mana for the... Statue to hack the bones down. And I'm going to start working on the ghost here. Noting that with a decay as well as a hack next turn, I can kill the ghost with five damage. Hmm. That's pretty good defense. You can hold on to that. Is it possible I'll need to stun the ghost this round? It's not only possible, it is likely. Uh, no longer necessary. Oh my god, that's actually incredible. So the mycologist gets the ghost to half health because the ghost has extra max HP, courtesy of some of the uh, modifiers that I have active. Giving it half health so that I can actually hit it with cruel because it's on half or less health, to get four damage to completely by, uh, bypass the damage phase there. Sorry, the invulnerability to damage phase there. I'm just so giddy and excited about it. And we'll hold off. Obviously undo anything there, because there's nothing to do there. Hmm. My colleges, I mean, yeah, you still have three mana sides we could hit, but this is good enough. Good mana. All right. Generate a bunch of mana. Let the statue do some damage. The brute can actually stun the spiker this round if we need it. Oh my god, it fled. Valkyrie and Warlock. Oh no. Oh no. Well, the Warlock is the ability to generate as much mana as I want very easily and quickly. Unfortunately, the Brute does not give us access to AoE, so, like, the Druid wanting to use Balance to set up for a Bloodlust is a little bit of an awkward situation. But the Warlock giving us the ability to transmute 6 mana into 13 damage is a game plan for how we win. And that's, I think, what we really need right now. Unfortunately, now we end up with the Singularity Homeless again. I'm going to give it to the Cantrip Ranged and see if that does anything in this fight here for us. Um, that'll be it, I think. Stand and deliver, Lich and Bones and Archer and Bones and Bones. Uh, this Bloodlust is already triggered one time by a Cantrip. It's only one less than the one that you know, takes my health in order to cast. Yeah, maybe maybe this is fine. 
The Brute using a Heavy Strike would be really good. Makes it a lot easier to set up for some stuff. Yikes. None of the rest of that turn worked as well as I wanted it to, unfortunately. Gonna get the Rogue to deal Poison to the back line, start their effect on the Lich. Get some more mana. I'm gonna use Hack. I'm gonna mean to use Hack basically every turn. And start work on one of these bones. Brute, you do want to keep as much max HP as possible, so you stun there. And I guess we hold. Really? And I'm also going to throw two damage against that bones on the top line. Now a single balance will kill that archer on the top line as well. Yeah, Druid, that's a still great turn for you. Brute. Uh, if I'm using a balance this turn, which it looks like is probably the most efficient setup for this, uh, then everyone on the board is going to be dead. Uh, well, actually, someone just needs to do too much to the bones. That's good enough. The Lich is not going to be revealed, but I will have the ability to reveal the Lich again by using Hack on the statue and your know, best case scenario here we get bloodlust eh actually the warlock getting blank here is completely fine because they will also be utilizing the hack oh no wait they won't we haven't got mana for it oh no well actually the rogue has range they will always be able to hit the back line never mind all of this was founded upon castles of glass Uh, Rogue has had two of their signs petrified. This is a poison side. I'm going to use the druid to actually cleanse that and allow them to poison again this round. I would love to just also throw out a bunch of hacks, but unfortunately we haven't got the mana for it. Please generate some. Thank you. <laughs> it's going to get real awkward if we couldn't generate any mana that turn. Okay. It's enough to kill the bones on the top line. Uh, unfortunately, I can't. Unfortunately, I can't target the back line in order to prevent the double summon here, which I would have been able to do. The Brute having 9 health and the Lich at the time having 9 health as well. 3 damage. There's Bloodlust. Yeah, this, this is just enough damage at this point that it has to go through. Okay. Three damage there, two damage there, setting up for the bigger Bloodlust. Bloodlust gives us nine mana. Let's do two balances, one more, and then just finish the Lich off with Poison. Nice. Overflowing Chalice, if you have three or more mana at the end of the turn, plus two mana. Interesting. A little bit of a, an attempt to force us to snowball. Nothing wrong with that. However, it's up against the Tooth Necklace. Add Cruel to the left sides. So times two to targets that are on half HP or lower. That'd be really, really helpful at determining like which healer or which shield character, which gray character we ended up going for. I think Overflowing Chalice right now is just going to be good for us. Because we are currently a mana run, basically. And with the Warlock locked in, we know that saving up for a Blaze on the second turn is a huge play a lot of the time for us. So I think we'll take the Overflowing Mana, put that on the Warlock. Extra Monsters. We could take a Sniper and a Ghost on here in order to get the Relic. Plus one to all signs if you're on exactly one HP. Friendship bracelet, that's actually pretty sick, but we're gonna lose the statue soon, which will make this less sick. Uh, enemies would just be fleeing all of the time from us. And the mana potion. I don't think we wanna go for that. The demon, uh, it's not impossible for me to kill the demon on turn one. If we kill the demon on turn one, then actually I think this would be very achievable. Oh, no, not super achievable. The ghost only has to roll eliminate and then suddenly I have to spend my whole turn dealing with the warlock. 
Oh, negative max mana. Or I'm mold add decay to all sides. I really don't like that. I'm going for the random tier one. I'm not taking the negative max mana because it's going to make it impossible for me to actually activate the uh, overflowing chalice. At the start of the second turn, shield one to all enemies. Fine. That's okay by me. That's the ability to kill the demon almost. There goes the demon. And then if I stun the snake, we don't lose the warlock. Literally, like, all of that fight was just, can I kill the demon fast enough? It's the only thing that mattered. Some nice mana there as well. Love to see it. Uh... Yeah, the druid is going down to that target. I can't keep the warlock alive here, unfortunately, as well as get their mana, which I would have liked to. Thankfully, we know that the null is going to be exerted next turn, so I can just focus on the one on the bottom line. Oh, also our heal and shield. Thank you. Oh my god, setting up for another Warlock without even having to heal them? Perfect. Oh, it couldn't be better. There goes one of the Nulls, and the other one goes down as well. Brawler and Shaman. Shaman with the Ritual for four mana to heal to, cleanse, and cleave is very appealing here. They have access to the ability to generate some of their own mana. They are effectively just the progression of the Druid, really. That's what's going on there. Uh, and the other offer is the Brawler. Kind of also just the progression of the Brute, really. We've got two damage Rampage sides. We've got a Steel side, which is going to be a little wanting for a while, unfortunately. Three damage Self Shield sides as well. To kind of keep them in the game and happy and healthy and by themselves. I think... I think Brawler... Really? Does it have to be Brawler? Shaman is so cool. Shaman could hold the Singularity very effectively. Possibility of generating four mana with it. Yeah. Much happier to have access to something like four mana here. Especially considering we are going to be relying on that for the possibility of healing cleansing our characters. We're relying on it for our damage as well. Like, we are a mana build right now that just kind of other classes are here to hang out while we try and generate enough mana to win the game. So that's the largest mana generation I can get from the Warlock. I would love the Shaman to respond by healing them up the 4 HP that they lost, and I end up with 8 mana from it all. Um, I do want to kill the Archer in the back line, but that is going to be difficult. I may just continue to push my roll for a little bit there. Brute, your damage is going to need to be directed because I want to take out the War Chief early if possible. Shaman, you're offering damage, but I really want your mana. Are any of the other sides even comparable, possibly, for us? Yeah, Vitality and the Growth. Both sides are completely fine by me. I'll settle for the ability to take out the Archer as well as the Shaman's decent damage there. Let's have a look at if this turn will be enough. First off, Archer goes down. That was always going to happen. Warlock generates their own mana. Then Brute's incapable of targeting the Warchief. But a hack gives the statue the ability to target the Warchief. The Brute has to attack the Troll and Burst defends the Warlock. 
I feel like the Brute could have been more involved there in trying to take down the bottom target, but Hack was as efficient as Burst in that space, noting that the statue was always going to be, you know, doing nothing. This is fine. Not super enthused about the fact the Warlock is, you know, almost dead. Poison seems a good idea, and so does the self shield right now. Uh, Shaman, you can really help keep the Warlock healthy. But really, that's best generated via mana this turn, I think. That'll have to be enough. Specifically, now I'm going to use Ritual to heal and cleanse both the Shaman, Warlock, and Statue all by two. Thank heck, we're now in the third turn. I get my heal and shield three, so my Warlock is going to be a lot easier to operate with. That's that grown side. A little bit more poison, nothing wrong with that. Brute, you don't need to self-shield, so that's the best you can do, unless we intended to stun this turn, which I don't really... Great. Hack and burst. There goes the troll. First target down. Feeling a lot better now. Now it's just the ogre and I. Oh, Shaman. Actually getting almost full value out of a 10 heal right there. That's not common. Set up another hack against the ogre. I'm even gonna burst. You can be provoked if you'd like. You're dying at the end of the turn nonetheless. Metal studs. Plus one to all shields, cell shield sides. We have none of those. Wax seal. All sides get plus one for each other identical side. I do love wax seal. But we don't really have any characters like that. Like, it's gonna help direct our upgrade for Rogue, probably, who can get a couple of similar sides. Uh, Gray can get a couple of similar sides. Really, I would have wanted it to direct my upgrade for the Warlock instead. Although, hang on, Wax Seal, I could also use after Leather Gloves if someone so happens to be set up for that. We don't even know if Metal Studs is gonna be useful for us at all. Taking the Wax Seal and seeing what we can do with that. Uh, wax Seal here is going to be used to give more poison and more cantrip ranged to the rogue right now. Because I think that's a really, really good idea. Brute, with the capability of defending against eight incoming damage with a single stun against a ghost this round, I feel like that's what you have to do. Shaman defending for four, for three on a target. It's pretty good. It helps keep the rogue even healthier. Okay. Um, how healthy does the rogue need to be, ultimately? <laughs> Like, can I afford to not try and waste damage here? No, I'm just killing one of the snipers that's targeting for 4 HP. They still die in one can- No, they don't die in one can because of the shielding! Dang it! Um, Brute, you can defend yourself this round. Uh, that's enough damage to take out one of the ghosts. And that'll help, and that'll be good. Cool, okay. Gets them to half HP, treats their half HP as lethal. Um, I do actually want to send a hack through. First to keep the Shaman around. Just any instance of that little bit of damage I can get in right now. Definitely worth it for us. Uh, that ranged attack hits the back line, but you still have cantrips. Shaman. It's good enough defense. You can even provide it to the Warlock if you'd like. Annoying. 
think I'm going to get, like, hard blocked here, right? Um... Because, yeah, I can't hit the ghost, and I can't hit past the ghost right now. Oof. He's a burst to try and keep the brute alive. And unfortunately, in having burst to keep the brute alive, I'm not triggering the chalice literally at all ever right now. It's kind of distressing. One of these days, I think it'll work, though. I believe we already have the kills. So it's two and three and two and that's, yep. All of them dead, roulette and leader. Man, roulette's good with the singularity. Gotta say that though. Two damage cleave on those two sides. Actually, oh my god, also, uh, the dragon hide would copy that to the top and the bottom over the cantrips, and then putting the wax seal down would give plus three to each of them, because there's three additional sides that are exactly the same as it. So they just become the cleave king. I do really like the idea of that. Yeah. All right, you may wear the gloves of no cantrip, so I don't push rolls on you if I can avoid it. And then, yeah, five damage cleave is most of your die. Unfortunately, you also have sticky death mandatory. So if you hit anything except for the sticky death mandatory, I just settle and go, yep, that's good. That's exactly what I wanted. I accept. Uh, I'm also gonna give the life bolt to the warlock who should have been holding it, admittedly, this whole time. Good enough. Uh, brute, that's ranged. I'd really prefer if you had the ability to actually take out the archer and self-shield this round. Ooh, preventing a ridiculous amount of incoming damage from the slate. That's also worthwhile, I believe. By my reckoning. Slate stunned. Weird. So, tough HP needs to be removed individually. Oh, no, right. It needs to be removed into. Never mind. I, I was thinking, like, each instance of them can be removed individually by one attack, so the overflow from one attack should remove one, but that would literally mean that, like, boars just die without a problem. That's not how it works. Uh, okay. Part of the problem I'm about to have is generating mana on the Warlock, sets up for, like, Burst, and then Hack. I mean, you know, that's two more HP on them. That actually did work out much better than I was thinking it would. Come on, Roulette, cleave. There we go. Uh, Shaman, that is a nice heal, but I would really prefer something else right now. Uh, Brood, if you can self-shield, that'd be great. So we have access to hack, which means I can take out the slate. Let's hack each of them attack, and then we use a burst, keeping the brute alive and losing the shaman. I think that's the right play for this turn. I think ultimately this ends up winning us the fight as well. Yep. Yeah, this should already have us most of the way there. Not fair. Stunned enemy with 20 or more max HP. Unlocks an item wand of stun. Replace the middle side with stunned enemy single use. Neat. Very, very utility item right there. You know what? I'm holding. I end my turn with three mana and I get two back from the chalice. Woo! It worked one time. Now I will execute the troll king. Iron Blood Pendant and Brimstone! Triple the pips to the rightmost side. Oh, wait a second. 
this is weird. So I want to triple the pips of the Rymo side, and then I want to use leather gloves to propagate it to the rest. But for the roulette, all that would do is make six damage cleave, six damage cleave, six damage cleave, and then this one's just two damage cleave. If six damage is super important in cleave, then maybe I could do something like that, but it doesn't seem it. Ironblood Pendant, plus three to incoming healing and shields. So that would just give four health to the Warlock every single time I cast. If I put that on the same target, that is. Brute and Statue both still haven't upgraded. You know what? Let's actually have a look at what they even can upgrade into here, right? What options would really butter my biscuit? So, seeing this run, also, if I've seen them this run, I'm not going to see them, right? That's, that's how that works, I believe. So, I could see Granite, Paladin, Mimic, Twin, literally none of the grey characters left have anything in their final slot. I could also see Barbarian, who has their weakest in their final slot. Wanderer has nothing. Curator has their weakest, a death side in the final slot. Veteran has just a normal side there. Yeah, no. No, 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 I don't want to plan around Brimstone anymore. Iron Blood Pendant is the right play here. Handcuffs. Oh, must be equipped. So it itself takes an item slot and it gives you negative one item slot. Just the character doesn't get to use any items. That's their thing. Skulk, uh, during the third turn, plus one to enemy sides. Hey, that's the same turn that I'm shielded. I think I can deal with that there. Hmm. All right, then. Let's go. Incredible cleave. Oh my god, we actually got the heal from the shaman on turn one. I did not think that was possible. Brute self-defense and statue. That's the best you can do. Great. I mean, the brute can kill the archer themselves, giving me the ability to deal the five damage maximum, or maximally to targets. Uh, the brute and the shaman are both dying this round, so if I use the blaze to kill this troll, then neither of them die. Uh, I'm also going to use Hack in order to get the statue to do four damage to the troll on the top side. Uh, the Shaman could have healed themselves, noting that the Warlock was going to be able to heal off of casting the spells there. Something I should keep in mind for the future. One troll down. Barbarian and Twin. I'm glad we looked at the things we were actually going to be leveling up into so I could make, you know, informed decisions in that way. We could have two uh, two twins, each holding a overflowing chalice. Just a mana generation situation for them, I guess. Um, hilariously, actually, they could hold wax seal. All sides get plus one for each other identical side. So all of these become shield fives. That's not bad. We just have two twins on the board shielding five. Bunch of other targets each time. It's... I mean, it's better than the statue. The only problem is someone's going to have to hold the martyr effect as well. Mm, no one really wants to hold the martyr effect. Like, roulette would actually hold the martyr effect in that instance. Which means we'd put singularity back on roulette. No, wait, hang on. She has to hold the martyr. Huh. Wait a second. If Twin holds the the wax seal as well as none of these really vastly help us against or with them. This just downgrades the damage roulette's doing by you know, one on each of the cleaves. But it gives us access to the wax seal again, which would then go on the... <sighs> Shaman, do I want you to have heal vitality and death sides? Is that it? I do usually want you to roll the other sides. 
usually. Just giving 10 shield a turn and having two characters on the board and the ability to duplicate another trinket if I want to, it just seems too powerful to turn down here. I'm taking the twin. So twin and you get that and you get wax seal. So just provide me five defense. That's all you need to do. Wait, they only have two health again? Get patched. Mm -hmm. Neat. Uh, that's almanac, almanac patch. Nope. Okay. Hmm. This four damage cleave is actually going to be very effective in this fight. Hits the zombie as well. Oh, uh, kills the zombie, in fact, as well as uh, stunning the whiz in the back line. Uh, yeah. Let's go. The enemies intend to kill my entire board. Double defenses of five. Uh, Shaman, that's a pretty good side for you. Brute, let's see what we can do with that side on you as well. Let's start out with the Klee, taking out the zombie and preventing the Wiz. Actually, if I do a strike against that fanatic first, I can guarantee their death already. And now my goal is actually to end this turn? Yes. I can only keep three mana, but overflowing should trigger twice, I believe. Yes! I have two different overflowing chalices. If you have three or more mana at the end of the turn, plus two mana, both of them trigger at the exact same time. So on the start of the second turn, I already have access to Blaze, which is exactly what I was hoping for. In fact, I think I may already have lethal again. Uh, let's do it. Because I have the ability to blaze two characters, so if I just blaze both fanatics, the Wiz and the Archer easily die into the Roulette's AoE. Hey, that worked out really well. This is only really going to come crumbling down when we have Roulette die on turn one in the final boss fight, and it's like, well... Ba -ba -da -da -ba -ba -da. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Please don't happen. Silk Cape. Got me the middle, uh, sorry, got me the left side onto the middle row. The Warlock could, oh no, having the Lifeblood as well as the Iron Blood is pretty good on the Warlock. But the Warlock is already getting over defended by the Twin a lot of the time. Uh, the Warlock could use that to have Bloodlust generation consistently available. And it's also the Goblet of Life, replacing the middle side with Heal and Shield 2, Cleave, Self Heal, and Self Shield. Uh, we could put that after the Martyr in order to give the Shaman a side that is still effective. I want the Silk Cape. Unfortunately, it means... Uh, Brute, you're gonna get the Life Bolt, and... I guess I'm gonna need to heal the Warlock less if they're getting more of their mana from Bloodlust. Ideally. And we're trying to set that up with cleaves from the roulette. Roulette, please don't roll the death side. Please don't roll the death side. Thank you. Actually, wow. Wow! Both of the twins are capable of using hack this round. I'm actually going to give them the possibility and, and just wait and see what we can do with this. Strike those wisps on the top line. Start attacking one of the fanatics as well. Ultimately, we're going to probably have to undo this to do this in some different order, but this is going to show me exactly how much mana I can generate. So we get eight from that. Uh, first spell you cast each fight costs plus one mana. So it's only the one first each fight. So we can take out Jinx. And then we have enough mana to do two hacks. We can get enough mana to do another burst if we need it. 
Uh, and this really does feel like just forfeiting a bunch of my characters right now. Like, I can keep the twin and the brute alive. I have to lose the warlock. Because I'm not actually focusing on the targets that are problematic. Okay, yeah, the twins should definitely go for defense here. So... I think pretty much everyone else has hit the correct thing, though. Shaman, do you need a heal right now? Uh, no, but I do need the mana. Okay. So what would actually be optimal targets here? Noting that I'm going to get enough to blaze one of the fanatics down, and I should probably blaze the fanatic that's targeting the brute. Let's... Uh, wait a second, those weren't on different targets. Hang on. Um... There we go. No, wait, I was trying to leave one of the Fanags undamaged. What am I doing here? It's... Because the max HP target always has to target a Fanatic, no matter what. That's the problem. So I need to use it on a target that I'm okay setting up against. But I also can't hit four targets. <sighs> Just limits a lot of what we can do with this turn, because now we have to deal with Blaze. Brute being able to target their own attack would be a lot better. Brute can continue to roll. Thank you. So... Take the AoE attack there. Set up that fanatic to easily die. This one is attempting to kill this twin. I think I just sacrificed that twin. There's three fanatics attacking at the same time. We start sacrificing things at this point. Blaze takes out one of them. One of the twins saves the warlock and the other twin saves the first. Two fanatics off board. I think that was pretty optimal. Pretty optimal. Not definitely optimal, which I don't think it was. Uh, brute, you can do damage and self heal with that. That's fine. Shaman, I would really like you to have a side that you can actually use. That'd be great. Taking out that fanatic before it attacks, not actually required right now. Three damage from the Shaman takes out the Jinx. Although before that occurs, let me get... I'm fine losing the twin at this point. Let me get as much mana as I can out of the Warlock, who is damaging themselves in doing so. Help. Hence, having to lose the twin to defend them. Another blast for that wisp. A blaze for this one. I'm just going to play it on the knife's edge and just have the fanatic die themselves that round. We were offered Bash and Veteran. I mean, Veteran is just so boring. It's got to be Bash, right? Very much the level up of Brute. Yep. Ah, it doesn't... Uh. Roulette's going to be able to kill things in AoE already. Yeah, it's got to be Bash. Just big, solid chunks of damage that they can throw at the dragon. 
I really, really need Roulette not to die. Just like immediately. Please don't just die immediately. Oh, I'm desperate for you not to die immediately. Here we go. Is there anything I want to change before I go in? I kind of want to give Roulette ranged, but I don't have the ability. Roulette has to lock both of these two items. Okay. Roulette does not actually manage to hit the cleave side. I'm kind of terrified to re-roll it. I'm not going to be able to kill the core this round, which means I will just start losing characters. Roulette! Managed to hit the 7 damage sticky death mandatory side. Well, they're being heavy targeted by the dragon as well. I guess they die, that's fine. <sighs> okay. Oh, Shaman only rolls death sides as well. Hey, um... Quick question. Uh, how do we feel about saves coming? Still negative? Me too. Okay, just wanted to float the possibility. Um... Can I survive? Unfortunately, that is very quickly the question I now have to ask. There's just no way I can keep the roulette alive, obviously. They have to use that attack that round. Single burst will keep one of you around, I guess. The other one has to keep the other one around, and we go into the next round. I mean, look. Five block is big. Um, inability to kill any of your enemies. Boy, that seems big too, though. Uh, Bash can do big damage with a single attack in certain instances. Actually, Shaman, that hack against the core would be sick right now. Okay. Okay, I think we can do this, actually. Warlock, give me mana. We have enough mana to use Blaze. We're not going to be using Blaze. I'm going to use hack. Shaman, kill the core. Even Ritual isn't keeping the twins alive. <sighs> At the end of the turn. So if the twin is dead before the end of the turn, the turn including the enemy's turn, uh, I'm not going to be able to activate that. Like, so here's what I've generated. The ability to deal that much damage to a single target. The dragon now has 23 HP and the warlock and the bash cannot fight it alone. Uh, so that is a that is a strategy to lose that I have identified there, unfortunately. The dragon has uh, specifically chosen the three damage poison cleave side and thrown it to the characters that do not have enough uh, HP uh, to survive that at all, ever. So what's one way we can try and deal with this? I mean, I think the hack on the, the core is a good idea. The core's otherwise going to be very difficult to take out. I think we could also take out one of the archers that's focusing on the shaman here. In doing so, we can keep the shaman like well and truly very comfortably alive. Bash, Shaman, Warlock? I don't see this. But I'm gonna try. Can you please... Wait, Dragon, did you... 
We're on turn three. The dragon gets plus one to all of their sides. You roll the poison cleave side again? Why? Uh, well. <sighs> I'd really like to be able to kill the archer in the back line as well. That would be very helpful here. Dragon, are you regenerating as well? Uh, Shaman, unfortunately, doesn't have that many good sides, so I really do want to just take that, but if I can blaze in a single turn, that's very helpful. I should probably just take the defense you're offered right now. Neither of those kills the archer in the back. Well, I guess this does kill the archer in the back line, unfortunately. So ritual keeps my characters on board alive. There's no world in which I can afford to deal seven damage and exert bash this round in order to just attack the archer on the top line. There's no world in which I can afford to do that here. Um... I think this is the end of the line for us. I think we are dead in this blurst run, unfortunately. <sighs> really got kind of personally dismantled by the enemy there. And hey, that roulette did get rolled in turn one, although it wasn't on your, the very first roll. Hey, it keeps the warlock alive for another turn. It's not really going to help us. Hack and first keep the warlock still alive. Go on, just tremble before the might of my warlock. I'll get you in the next life, dragon. Rest in peace, party. You had some sick stuff going on. The Ice Singularity was really, really helping out there. We had the Wax Seal on the Twin. Given five block per. Unfortunately, the Roulette was just far too keen on that Sticky Manager Death Side. I really, really, really wanted to have access to the Cleave so that I could try and set up for the Bloodlust on the first turn. And I thought it was very important because otherwise the Archers were going to be very difficult to deal with. Which, as it turns out, that was correct. Yeah, they were very difficult to deal with without that. Ah, oh, buddy. A tough time. But you know what? I've got a taste for Blurst. In the start of the next episode, we're going to start our next Blurst run. But until then, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slice and Dice. Series playlist is up in the top left. YouTube recommendation down below. Stream past the names of people so generously supporting the Republic on Patreon.com slash Rhapsody Plays. I'd to thank you. And a special thanks this episode to Doyler. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you all next time.